Good morning, folks. Once again, the non-Earth-facing side of our star is active. We saw two eruptions just behind the limbs over the last day, this one here, and yet another one shooting out from the departing limb on the right. That one was actually occurring over a long period that extended through production of this morning's news. Should be done by now if you want to go check it out for yourself in full. Other than the eruption to the north and that one there, neither of which will hit Earth, it was once again an Earth-facing, solar-quiet kind of a day. But alas, no calm shall endure forever, and we are watching Mercury and Mars break solar opposition today, so the activity should keep rising. Now, despite a complete lack of solar flare events, that aforementioned activity may actually make its way onto the Earth-facing disk here soon. The central sunspots are still pretty much a joke, but I've got significant growth to report here in this one. Top alert today, along with those coming in behind it, I do expect some flares in the coming days. The solar wind and Earth's magnetic shield are calm, but this scatter reading the last few hours could herald a CIR or even a coronal stream impact in full. Today's data will tell the tale. Yesterday, while the news was processing, we took two gamma ray bursts in quick succession, each coming out of the Scorpio constellation. Interesting event there. Jumping back to four days ago when all magnetic connection lines from Earth to Sun hit that one coronal hole, then they began jumping to the trailing extension and then the incoming southern coronal hole, which is already beginning to affect Earth with its interplanetary magnetic fields. It will directly face Earth the next couple of days and offer another earthquake watch to follow these multiple days of below average quaking we've just seen. Major news times two. First, the Earth spots hypothesis states that Earth must have the same field structures as the Sun all the way up in different size and form. It turns out that the lower L shells are actually plasma tubes, and boy oh boy does that look like the coronal magnetic fields. More coming on this at suspiciousobservers.org. An equally major discovery is one that makes the last four years worthwhile. Folks, flowing electrons, aka electric current, not solar photons, help release the water and gases from comets. Those in the new electric universe theory have long held that to be a better mechanism than pure heating. And when combined with our previous understanding of how protons can do the same, we're now off the mainstream model here and strictly into electrical explanations for this comet behavior. What about NASA's flying saucer test? Scrub launched today due to bad conditions. They do have a window open at 1.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, so we'll update again tomorrow morning. Lastly, I don't scold too often here, especially not one of my heroes, Tony Phillips of SpaceWeather.com. But when he and the rest of the scientific community essentially laughed the solar forcing folks out of the climate room for suggesting the sun drove the weather, it is a bit of a knife in our side to now see the widespread promotion of those same ideas credited to children just now coming into the light of things. Oh, I don't think so, doctor. Anyway, stolen ideas aside, we've got twin systems in the eastern Pacific. One has weakened, but Blanca did not and is about to charge north there. Top Earth spot quake alert with the coronal hole coming in as well. Folks, it's been an absurd couple weeks for weather in the United States. This is flooding in New Jersey, causing fish to swim down the road. People were just walking around, picking them up with their hands. We've had baseball-sized hail, tornadoes, and flooding in other parts of the country as well, especially the south-central states, and it's likely to continue tonight. Once again, it is the north-central states taking the top alert as that heat and moisture flow rushes to the area. All that energy will be expressed as bad weather tonight. Europe. Not much changes. The big low up north still draws its convergence, dumping major snow on some northern lands beneath the storm, along with a smaller system to the southeast as well. That is indeed where you're going to see the clouds. Down under. The first low is now sitting on top of New Zealand, while the southern low is still reaching up from Antarctica with its convergence and cutting across Australia. You'll see it again in the clouds there. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Folks, major headway was made on the support email, so if you sent one, 
Please check for a response as some of the to-dos are time sensitive. I've had to extend the lower membership price because of how much time it's taking me, but the hard cutoff is now June 5th. Everyone who sent previous emails must act before then. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.